Hi, today I want to talk to you about five things that a fiction writer must know in order to be successfully published. Now, the five things that I'm going to tell you about apply whether you're going to be traditionally published or self-published. First thing is, you have to read fiction. Yeah, you got to read lots of fiction. Now, this is not just, um, I'm an avid reader, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a voracious appetite for fiction. That's good. But you're also reading critically. And not just, oh, that was bad. But you're reading to figure out what's publishable. Everybody's got different tastes in fiction. What you like, what you don't like, and everything in between. But look at it critically. What is it exactly in that book that works? What is it that doesn't work? And figure out how to pull those things into your writing. That's the first thing. Read lots of fiction. And read with a critical eye with your thinking cap on. Number two, remember that fiction writing for publication is a business. Now, this was an eye-opener to me when I first started writing back in the late 90s with you know, my mindset, I'm going to get this thing published, traditionally published. So when I started out, self-publishing wasn't really uh, as big it is, as it is today. So uh, I wasn't really thinking, uh, you know, this is going to be a business and I've got to have a business plan and I need to start a business um, advising group and I need to maybe start a business account and, oh yeah, I'm going to have to report this on taxes and oh, itemizing office space in the home. And I didn't have anything, any of that on my mind. Not a single thing except, let me just get this story written and I'll find somebody to publish it for me. That's all I thought. I wasn't really thinking as a business person. So that's the second thing. Publishing fiction needs to be done as a business. That's a small business. You're a business owner. So third thing is write what you know. Of course you've heard that. I know. Don't skip. Don't skip ahead to number four. So I've got, I got a little bit more to drop into number three. Write what you know, but guess what? You can expand that space of what you know. Now, you can interview people. You can read books. Oh, my goodness, there's, there's a reading thing again. I thought I was supposed to be a writer. Yeah, but you're a writer who's expanding your knowledge. You're expanding your knowledge through reading nonfiction. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're reading critically to figure out what's publishable in the fiction space, but you're also reading to find out uh, background information or the, the science or the engineering behind a certain thing before you write that into that character. So you're expanding your knowledge. You're expanding of, right, or, or expanding of what you know. And also, something that I think people take for granted, you travel. And as you're traveling, you're collecting all different things that would be pertinent to your character, to your scenes, to your to your um, the worlds that you create. Even if you're writing non, or, or even if you're writing science fiction, you can use travel to create worlds that are unworldly. That's fun. So that's the third one. Write what you know, but dot dot dot. Okay, fourth one. Write like your heroes or sheroes in the fiction world. Oh, write like your idols. Yeah, you can copy, but only to a certain extent. You don't want to be a cookie cutter. Um, you want to find your own style. And I forget where I've read it, but I heard somewhere along the way, in the you know, 10, 12, uh, oops, there goes my notes, <laughs> in the 10, 12 years that I've been writing for publication, I heard it said that you have to write at least a million words before you find your voice as a writer. Yeah, a million words. Oh my goodness, that's crazy. Uh -huh. But yeah, a million words before you really find your stride as a writer. And I think that's true. I've got three fiction works, long uh, novel length fiction works, and a couple of nonfiction titles. And uh, 
yeah, I'm I'm sort of starting to feel like this is where my, where my sweet spot is. Not to say that I don't hit some rough places and it's like that that was awful. That was really bad. <laughs> I thought I was supposed to be a professional at this. Yeah, so that'll happen. But you gotta keep writing. You gotta keep writing. And that leads into the fifth one. Even though my notes fell down, I still remember what I wrote. So the fifth one is, you have to have a writing habit. Every day. Every other day, once a week. On the weekends when you sit down, you are writing as a writer, as a business mind, and a writing habit. You don't wait for inspiration. There's no such thing as a writer's muse. I mean, we writers, you know, we make up things and make it seem so mystical and we wait for inspiration and, you know, they just kind of fall on us like pixie does not. You put your butt in the chair and you write. You write bad, you write good, and then you revise a lot. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you write and you write and you write. Writers write a whole blinking lot. <laughs> And somewhere in there, you find the gold. You find the good stuff. It comes out as you push yourself daily. So those are my five. Uh, if you want the uh, download, the notes that fell down, <laughs> uh, I'll provide a link in the description. And uh, leave me a comment if you have any other questions or if you have any uh, further thoughts, I'd love to hear from you. I'm always learning. I don't know it all. But I thought I'd share a little bit of what I have gained. Thanks a lot.